I'm especially concerned because though we live in a country where supposedly we're all created equal, very different things happen to us after that creation, depending on where you live, depending on where you're on your income. It's disturbing, especially because the EPA said, and I'm reading a quote from New Yorker magazine from an EPA spokesperson. They said, quote, a monetary value is assigned to disease, impairments, and shortened lives, and weighed against the benefits of keeping a chemical in use. A price tag is on your head. A price tag is on your unborn child's head. And they're weighing it against profit. They're weighing against money that's not going to come to you. I know I get no money from Syngenta. And what concerns me is that I know that my little girl's price tag is different from some other people's price tag. I know that my friend Otto, who I just met here, his little girl's price tag is different from the price tags of the people who actually get the profit from these chemicals. That concerns me. That concerns me so much that I cross the line. I cross the line because I love my doctoral advisor, but I just taught in general academia, don't be an advocate, let the science speak for itself, I just taught. How can I let the science speak for itself when the other side isn't letting the science speak for itself? I eventually grew to follow a principle that says those who have the privilege to know have the duty to act. And again, no disrespect to my PhD advisor, but I think this guy had a better idea. <laughs> I crossed the line because the EPA said about advertising in my work that the ultimate decision is much bigger than science. It's a quote from the EPA. They said, it weighs in public opinion. So this agency that your tax money supports is waiting on you to tell it what to do. And if I'm publishing a PNES in Nature and the public can't get access to my work, how can people make a decision and guide the EPA? This is what the EPA says. If they're counting on you, then I want to give you two pieces of advice. One is, don't fall for false profits. Just because the company's telling you that this is the future of agriculture and we're going to feed the world, don't believe it. Atrazine, some estimates are that it increases corn yield by 1.2%. And we eat less than 2% of the corn we grow directly. But also, don't fall for false profits. Hmm. You're not going to get the money, the extra money, that they're going to make by poisoning our environment. I want to end with the quote. Sometimes you find things in interesting places that might seem unlikely. So I want to end with the quote that maybe you'll think comes from an interesting place. It's time for us as a people to start making some changes. Let's change the way we eat. Let's change the way we live. Let's change the way we treat each other. You see, the old way wasn't working, so it's up to us to do what we got to do to survive. Who knows who said that? Two bucks. Two bucks. There you go. <laughs>